Hi there. So welcome to the first in our series of uh, crime fiction manuscript showcase videos. Uh, well, that's quite a mouthful. So I'm author and story coach Vicky Newham, and I'm here this evening um, with Gary Twig. And Gary's going to tell us a little bit about him, um, and then I'm going to ask him um, about his writing um, and his manuscript um, and what it is that he's seeking. So Gary, lovely to meet you. Um, so Hi, first of all then, um, if you could just start by telling us a little bit about you. So, uh, you know, what's your name? What name do you write under? Um, and whereabouts in the UK do you live? Yeah, so uh, my name is Gary Twig, uh, and I write under the pseudonym of Anthony Stephen. Uh, I live in uh, Runcorn, Cheshire, um, and I work for a charity. I'm uh, for a, um, a charity supporting blind and partially sighted people, yep. and I'm also a qualified counsellor. Fantastic. And so how long then have you been writing, um, and sort of whereabouts are you now on your writing journey? Yeah, I, I've been writing on and off for most of my adult life. I think I wrote a terrible sword and sorcery book when I was about 16. Um, I don't know where that is now. It's in a, in a trunk somewhere. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, uh, a lot of short stories over the years. But I think in the last sort of two years, I decided to really knuckle down and, and, and write some books. So at the moment, I've got three full length books, which are published on Amazon, uh, plus a novella. Uh, one of the novels is a standalone horror book uh, and the other two full length novels are part of a trilogy uh, and I'm, I'm writing the third one at the moment. OK, and whereabouts are you then with that one, number three? Yeah, I'm probably about a quarter of the way through that one. Right, okie dokie. Um, and so do you currently have agent representation um, or a publisher? Uh, no, I, not at the moment. I'm, I'm as I say, I'm self-published. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I've been building up a following um, via, really, by my author website. Yep. Um, and I have a free book on the, and I've sort of building up a list of of, of readers via email. Mm -hmm. um, and also, I've, I, through that, I've been sending a newsletter once a month, really, just to tell people about what's going on with writing and any any sort of offers that's coming up as well. Fine, fantastic. Um, and so um, are you looking for an agent then um, at the moment or a publisher um, or potentially both? <laughs> uh, potentially both would be great. <laughs> OK, um, and so um, it, it, I wanted to ask if you have and this might sort of sound it's, sound like it's a bit strange, but it's something which um, publishers are often uh, interested in. So you mentioned about building up your audience and your following. Um, and so um, do you have an, an audience? What is your following um, like sort of currently? Um, and, you know, do you have any links with any? Have you made links and contacts with any bookshops, for example, or any arts events for promotion? Yeah, I haven't done that. Um, <clears throat> I did. I, I did belong to uh, uh, an organisation called Jericho Writers. Yeah. And I used to go to the. Um, they had a, a writing fair every year, so I, I've been to that yeah. a couple of times <laughs> before it all. You know, before everything sort of shut down. Yeah. Um, but I, I've kind of linked into an organisation called Book Sweeps, and they right. they through the you can sort of offer books normally ebooks um and they have giveaways <clears throat> and then the people who actually put in for your giveaway you know they give their emails mm -hmm. and it's obviously it's, it's it's sort of tailored to genres that, that that people like whether it be you know thrillers crime or romance mm -hmm. so it's it's one of those things so yeah. um that i've kind of built my reader list up i suppose if you like yeah fantastic yeah. so um what crime fiction writers do you like then and sort of what what who are your influences and inspirations yeah i um, read a lot of val McDermott, McDermott stuff ruth rendell years ago uh, i do love stephen king gillian flynn cj tudor people like that mm -hmm. quite a few more really and so can you share with us any recent novels that have like just completely sort of blown you away 
Yeah, I loved, um, and it was the start of a series, which I'm, I'm, I'm sort of delving into when I get some time. I think it was uh, the first book in the series, Secrets and Lies by Caroline Mitchell. Yeah. Um, that, I, that I thought that was really good, and I'm going to sort of plough through that series. Mm-hmm. I think she's a good writer. And one call, I, I really just like like the book. It, it wasn't the first in the series, but um, I just caught it on the Kindle Stone Cold Heart by Kaz Freer. Uh-huh. I enjoyed that as well. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Well, Caroline Mitchell's, um, you know, will slightly overlap with yours then that you're going to tell us about in a minute. Mm. Very exciting. Yes. <laughs> so let's move on then and then just think a little bit about uh, your manuscript and so um, what you've written. So do you want to just tell us a little bit about that? And so, you know, first of all, what, what have you written and what is the, the subgenre uh, for the work that you would be uh, you know, seeking representation for or a contract for? Yeah, so it, it's it's the book I'm writing now is the third in the trilogy uh, of a um, series, and <clears throat> it's about a psychic um, who sort of works with a DCI in the Met in London mm-hmm. uh, to basically solve. Ki- uh, the, the first two have been serial killers, and the, the mm-hmm. third one is going to be as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a mixture really of, of crime, police procedural, and, and the paranormal genre. Mm-hmm. Um, and the subgenre is probably supernatural. There are some horror scurry bits in it. Mm-hmm. Um, so the first two, uh, the, between 70 and 75,000 words. So I can yeah. pitch it about that length. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so as I say, I'm on the first draft of the third one in the series. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And so what stage, how far in that? Uh, so you're, you're on your first draft. Uh, yeah. What stage are you at with that? Yeah, I'm probably about a quarter of the way through, mm-hmm. um, but I, I, I'm, you know, sort of hoping to have it finished in the next couple of months, really. I'm going to crack on with it now. Yeah. Um, you, have you got that plotted? Are you a plotter or a... I'm a, I'm a general outline plotter. Yeah. Um, so I know roughly what's going to happen, but I kind of, things will sometimes go on a different turn than I envisage <laughs> with characters. <sighs> so I'll know, I'm, so what I... So, sort of my rule of thumb with it with every chapter is that it starts with um, a situation then there's instability or conflict and then there's a change by the end of the chapter which moves the story on that's kind of my that's what I aim for in every chapter really so I think it's helps keep the, the, the story moving so it's quite fast paced really okay okay and so you said and then so this is the third one um in your your series fantastic yeah um and so in terms of uh, publishers often ask and, uh, you know, it can be a bit, some, a bit difficult sometimes to think about, you know, who to compare our work with because it can kind yeah. of, oh, I don't really know, or it can sound a bit like, oh, I don't want to say them because they might feel X, Y or Z. Um, but it's basically just us, you know, wanting us really to kind of, you know, know and understand where our work might fit, you know, on a bookshelf. Um, and so whose work or novel would you say that yours might be sort of similar-ish to? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, obviously, I'm talking about great writers here. Um, I, I said before, I love Stephen King, and he's, two in particular that stick out in this type of genre is one called Joyland and one called The Outsider, particularly The Outsider because one of the main characters is a policeman, mm-hmm. and there's a very strong police procedural element in that book. Mm. Um, CJ Tudors, The Other People is, is mm. another one um, Alex North who uh, debuted with a book called The Whisper Man which I really loved and that very much fitted into what the type of thing I write I think um, Fantastic yeah. 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 yeah I must admit I, um, I I read Outsider or The Outsider whatever it's called and then I you know and then I watched the series um, yeah. and then I went back and read the, reread the book <laughs> Yeah, amazing, amazing. Um, as, okay, and then so thinking about now, then sort of the the setting, um, you know, with your book. So, have you whereabouts is it set? And you know, do you have any connections? For example, is it set where you live? Or well, yeah, this is a funny one. It isn't actually. Um, it's set around uh, mostly set around London. Yeah. Uh, DCI Kate Garvey, who's, the, who's one of the main characters, she she works at the Met. Um, and she's part of the major investigation team, so that's her patch. Mm-hmm. Um, she's from Liverpool, which is kind of near where I'm from. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so I've even written some prequels about her as a young person and Nick as a young person who's the other main character. So I, I think with, with Kate in particular, I've incorporated facets of several close female family and friends yeah. into her character who, mm -hmm. who are also from Liverpool. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And so um, could you just tell us a little bit also then, I, I always find it fascinating to hear what motivated you. So, you know, with this particular series, um, what is it? And, and this, the third one, what motivated you um, to write the story? Yeah, it's a funny question, this one, Vicky, because my horror book, I know exactly where it came from. A lot of it's sort of derivative from my own childhood and stuff like that. But someone asked me the question about these books and I, I was quite stumped for a while. And then I, I realised that um, I've always loved um, Wiring the Blood series, which was um, Val McDermott, mm -hmm. the books and the TV series with Robson, Robson Green. Yeah. And it was that relationship that I love between Dr. Tony Hill and DCI Carol Jordan. So I think in a sense I've substituted Tony Hill's character for my main character, which is Nick Ballard, and he's a psychic rather than a clinical psychologist. So <laughs> that, when, I, when I really thought about it, I think that that was sort of maybe the seed for it. Yeah. That's interesting, isn't it? I don't know. When, do, do the police work with psychics? I think I've seen a couple of programmes on television. Do they? Mm. Yeah, I kind of discussed this. But, uh, and what they have done and do, not only here, but in other countries like the United States, they keep it very under under wraps and won't really comment about it if they have. Mm. So, Yeah, I think that's that was the impression that I had. Um, I mean, it's fiction, so it doesn't matter whether they do or they don't. You know, if it makes a good and compelling story, that's, that's you know, all that matters. But it's really yeah. interesting to think about, isn't it? And, you know, the fact that they do kind of, you know, keep it a bit quiet, uh, you know, if they do or whatever. Um, yeah, nice one. OK, so let's just think a little bit then about the plot um, of this third book um, and your characters. And so can you give us a, your elevator pitch? So your little teasery, um, you know, couple of sentences um, about book three. Yeah, so if, if I want to just sort of sum it up in a sentence, really, um, it's about a psychic and a policewoman who are pitted against a damaged nurse who is killing patients by using paranormal abilities. Fantastic. Yay. And so my next question was, and you kind of covered that really about, you know, does the story have a, a hook? Uh, well, I mean, obviously publishing professionals watching this can sort of make their mind up what they think about that. But what would you say, um, you know, is the, the hook for this book? Yeah, I think I think the hook really is, is what would happen uh, if a nurse had the power to kill people mm -hmm. and patients with a mind? Mm. wow yeah and obviously then the story factors in why she's like that and why she comes to that and you know it's not <clears throat> never like to do two-dimensional villains there's always they've always got the story and and as we know you know um yeah what, what, yeah. what motivates someone yes yeah so and um, what is it that starts the whole story off then what is it that gets the sort of the action moving and yeah, um, so our antagonist, who's our nurse, she's travelling into London by train. She's going on a shopping trip, which she does to reward herself uh, just a, as a treat um, and just thinking normal thoughts. And then she's sexually harassed uh, on the train. Someone sort of sort of physically contacts her mm -hmm. um, and, and then is, is, is very dismissive and ugly to her. So she actually uses her power sort of to poison and ultimately kill him, which she knows will happen. Mm -hmm. um with with this paranormal power that she has mm. um, and that's the start of it as the guy kind of walks away she knows it that he'll be dead before the next morning so <laughs> oh, wow <laughs> <laughs> okay so let's think about your characters then so who, who is tell us a little bit about your protagonist yeah so um nick ballard um who from the first book we met him um he um he was not in a good way he was he turned to alcohol uh, he was basically what he could do was read he was a mind reader but only mm -hmm. certain people and there's a way he identifies that mm -hmm. in the book 
Um, so it's when we come, he's kind of evolved in the first two books, uh, and his his abilities have changed a little bit, and he's kind of realised there was there's actually more to what he can do than just reading minds. Mm-hmm. Um, but we he's been through a lot of trauma um, and a couple of near deaths in the other two books. Uh, but you know, I think it basically made him apart from that hopefully root for him because he's a, he's an ordinary man with flaws and mundane problems as well mm-hmm. um and in this book he's got a fledgling romance with dci kate garvey which mm-hmm. has kind of been on the slow burn for the first two books <laughs> but it's now getting to where you know <laughs> the warm burn yeah. starting to happen yeah yeah <laughs> um and so just briefly then, who are the other sort of main characters? So who have we got around um, the team and the nurse? Yeah, so she, we've got um, obviously DCI Kate Garvey, who, mm-hmm. who who's quite established in, in the first two books. Um, excuse me. And she um, she's um, a single mum, basically with a grown up son um, and very career driven, um, very sceptical, which was kind of has been kind of the way they've bounced off each other she's very pragmatic so all this stuff all this stuff that's come up in the first couple of books it's been really tough for her and she's mm-hmm. had a lot of conflict but then found herself quite attracted to nick mm-hmm. um so you know we've come to the stage in book three where they're actively working with each other mm-hmm. um and then other characters are olivia granger who's nick's sister who mm-hmm. actually works for that she's a barrister for the cps Mm-hmm. which played a part in the first book in particular. Uh, Rob Garvey, who's Kate's son, mm-hmm. um, who's had quite a cu- couple of bad times in the first two books. Uh, Chief Superintendent Akita Venkat, who's Kate's boss, who's hit, who entered in book two and initially had a very fraught relationship, but that sorted it out by the end of book two. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then there was a, quite a, a strange guy who were in, introduced into book two called John Rennick. Um, he's a psychic medium. Uh, and mm-hmm. I've actually written a novella about him as well. That's that's the novella that's on um, Amazon. It's just called Rennick. So, what's um, the region? Where is it that you um, they're set? So, yeah, so around the London area. Although John Rennick lives in Manchester. I was just wondering um, which, part of, what, which part of London, because as you're referring to your characters, I was thinking, oh, that sounds interesting. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Yeah, just 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 in in, in I think um, around. So Nick actually originally lived in Oxford, but mm-hmm. at the end of book two, he's moved into his sister's flat and looking to actually looking to work with Kate. Um, he mm-hmm. at the start of book three, he's actually a, a civilian call handler, and it's a way for him to get into be able to help Kate when she needs his, as she calls it, spooky abilities mm-hmm. <laughs> when she's trying to solve some um, quite nasty cases. Mm-hmm. Um, so just the you know the the London area really. Okay, yeah, cool. And so, what would you say that the the main themes are, or the main theme of the novel? Yeah, I think the themes of the book are the misuse of power, uh, born out of misplaced anger, and the need for both control and revenge. Uh, also, the complexity of love for the main characters when the lives are coloured by a professional relationship and all the stresses and strains that that brings, uh, really. Fantastic. Mm. So um, just a couple more questions then. And and, um, so this one really is about, you know, thinking um, and sort of just sharing with us, if you can, why you think that um, readers, um, and obviously if we're talking about agents and editors, you know, who are also readers, why would um, readers, why would they want to, what can you tell us about your book um, that might make them think, yes, I've got to, I've got to get that book? Um, I think because my, my, my sort of focus, I think, is, it, is something that I've always loved in books and movies and film or whatever, is to, that, to, to that the, you need to care about the main characters mm-hmm. and sort of invest in them, root for them, um, in in sort of in the structure of a story that um, is, is twists and turns, mm-hmm. um, that is 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 fast paced in this sort of genre. I think mm-hmm. so. You know, there's always something happening that changes something. Mm-hmm. Um, that the 
there's there's quite a bit of, like in the first two books there's quite a bit of mystery and you're not sure why things are happening for quite a while so i like to sort of slowly unfold that and i want people sort of the reviews i've had particularly for the first book catechism is that it, you know i just wanted to know why and what, what what, mm -hmm. what's going to happen next mm -hmm. um just just like i say just have an inciting incident to move the story forward mm -hmm. um obviously it's I twisting quick, i had a quick look at your um your you know your reviews earlier and they're you know they're fantastic so obviously you've you know you've got some really uh interested and loyal readers there um yeah really really that's enjoying nice. your story so that's thank um, you thank you that's great. And we've talked about the hook, um, haven't we? Um, yeah. And so do you want to just tell us a little bit about that again? So the, the way that you said it to me earlier on. Um, yeah, um, it's what if the, what if a nurse had the power to kill people with a mind? That brilliant. power. Um, yeah. Brilliant. Love it. So, um, so you've said that it is, um, it's nice and fast paced um, and, you know, it sounds like you've got plenty of twists and turns and it also, you know, it sounds like, it sounds like it's really creepy. <laughs> <laughs> it can be, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, I, th I think, um, yeah, someone said, someone said to me, God, how do you sleep with your one eye, you must sleep with one eye open, <laughs> but he's thinking about stuff like this in stories, but as you know, Vicky, it doesn't work like that, does it, you know? Yeah. Just, these, these things are just there, aren't they? But yeah, um, yeah. yeah it's definitely definitely creepy and and, and yeah, because you know there is that element of of, of horror in it, um, and it can take it can go to some dark places. Brilliant. But, um, yeah. Okay. So we've nearly finished now. Then, so before we do, we just need to. Can you tell us? So, how can people contact you? So, um, do you have a website? You know, what's your email? Are you on social media? Um, do you want to just run us through that? Yeah. So I've got a website which is anthonystephenauthor.com. Um, and as I said, there's a, there's also a there's a free novella on there, and that is about a character who features in the first Nick and Kate book. Mm -hmm. um i'm on twitter as um at gary twig one mm -hmm. twiwg um and my email is um twig 63 at hotmail.com fantastic well that pretty much brings me to the end of uh you know what i wanted to chat to you about is there anything else that you wanted to say so you know now's your opportunity to speak to any agents or editors or publishing professionals who might be watching is there anything that you would particularly like to add yeah um just yeah if if anyone just wants to have a look at me work that that'd be fantastic and then as I say, there's a, there's a, I think it's about a 10,000 word novella there mm -hmm. that's, that's easy to, easy to download and read. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, just give me a chance. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for, you know, chatting to me. I know it's not easy, you know, chatting to yeah. you know, some women on the internet who you've not actually met in real life um you know good sort of good good for you um and it's been an absolute pleasure you know hearing about your book i mean i have to say when you were talk, talking about the premise of your book and the hook you know i got goosebumps on the back of my neck and so you know you've got well there's one person there who thinks yeah i'd like to read that thanks very much <laughs> Oh, so, um, so this is the first, and thanks so much for watching, the first in our crime fiction manuscript showcase video series. That definitely is a mouthful. So I shall switch off record.